How do you make a box more interesting? And a box is a box, right? What's up everyone, I'm Nick. Welcome back to the shop. In this week's build video on the surface level, we're turning a box into something cool. Going a little deeper, we've got some new technique, overcoming creative challenges, and using some pretty cool new tools. So I hope you enjoy the build and let's get dusty. So last time I did an ash project, somebody commented that if it was walnut, it would have way more views. And all I'm saying is, where is the love for my white ash? <laughs> all right, guys, we are getting started here. Skip some of the milling, and this week is building a hope chest. Blanket chest, the place where your wife puts those 7,000 pillows, and a place to stash a gun, Bible, or banana, whatever you're into. Now when I get inquiries for something like this, it is hard for me to get excited because it's a box. And you done one box, you done all the boxes. So I gotta come up with some way to make this interesting. And while we let that brew, I'm just getting the case together and cutting the dovetails the cheater way on the table saw. I am resolute in my determination to improve my craft always. And if you've seen any of my other builds, uh, you may recognize that I tend to find the hardest thing I know how to do on every new build and just figure that out. But this is becoming increasingly difficult. Now, once you've cut one dovetail, you've cut every dovetail and a rectangular box is just that. Uh, what can I do to make this more interesting? Maybe we'll skip that on this one and just build like Chris Schwarz anarchist tool chest, but as a blanket chest. That'll make my life so much easier. Just do something that somebody's already done. Hmm, or we could cut one of the sides of the box in half and then I've got to do something. That'll be like a catalyst. Like I can't just leave that side of the box in two pieces. Yeah. This seems rational, totally rational. Great idea, Nick. What are we gonna do with a five-sided box? Eh, it, it'll come to me. It, we'll, we'll figure this out. Let's keep cutting some dovetails and definitely it'll come to me, hopefully. One thing that I know that I want to incorporate on this piece is an ingrained veneer. So why don't we go ahead and make that hole bigger? That seems counterintuitive, but I think it'll help. So veneer gets a bad rap, but high quality shop sawn veneer really allows you to do things that wouldn't otherwise be possible. This ingrained veneer is extremely fragile and there's no way you could just glue up a panel and hope for it to stick. So this really allows for some very cool applications and ain't your 90s red oak veneer. Got the veneers taped together on the front side and then using this veneer tape, which as it dries, it actually sucks the join together on the glue side. And that piece over the top is just so it doesn't get goop all over my bag. And the mesh spreads out the vacuum pressure, which is pretty cool. And then I can go ahead and cut that shape out that matches the one in the front that we cut out of the box. And since the ingrain is really fragile and it is backed in epoxy i'm gonna go ahead and finish it in that as well there we go full box again that looks cool so now let's go ahead and build the bottom 
So for this, we're gonna do tongue and groove, starting with one board, chop it down or resaw it, and then take it to the router and cut the tongues and the grooves. Kind of got book matches all the way across, all comes from one board, so the color is really nice. And then we're gonna cover it in blankets and never see it again. So yeah, that's how I roll. That front panel finished with the ingrained veneer. We're moving on to the lid or seat, however you want to look at that. And I knew that I wanted to complement the shape of that, but I don't necessarily think that ingrain on the seat would be appropriate. So we're doing raised panels for the seat. Think of your cabinet doors. And instead of a straight style or rail, I always get those two confused. The center one is going to reflect the shape of that front panel. Little details, all about the little details. So everyone loves to see when I make mistakes for some reason. Um, <laughs> So I came out this morning, this panel that's inset into the top of the lid, I don't know, I'm just not loving it. Uh, the reveal's a little shitty. I could definitely clean that up a bit. And there's a chip missing out of this style. So I'm just gonna redo the center portion, which pretty easy, uh, just a quick resaw, uh, joint plane, glue up, and recut the joinery. And that easy. These bent lamination forms, uh, you might recognize this one from the console table. It just kind of kills me how much material these use and they're kind of a one and done thing. So I'm going to try something a little different here. We're going to do some bent laminated veneered leg support things. You'll see what I mean. Let's do it. Instead of using veneers for the entire thickness of this panel, I'm using bending plywood, which is a flexible sheet good as the core. And as you add a face veneer and a backer veneer, in this case, I'm using Shopson white ash with a backer of poplar. That along with glue solidifies that panel in the curve that you're looking for. Cool, huh? Now that we've got most of the components done, we can start to dress up the inside so it feels just as smooth as a baby's ash. All right, let's get on to hardware. side goes to the top rail and the back side.
All right, I think we got all of the components done and now we just gotta assemble. Uh, I've got a couple of gaps here on the styles for the top panel lid uh, that I wanted to fine tune. I think we can do better with that gap. Quick swipe with a shoulder plane and yep, that's better. But besides that, we'll get this assembled and finished and to see how this turned out. So the benefit to doing tongue and groove in the bottom is it allows for wood expansion and contraction, but to allow for that to happen, you have to leave little gaps and to keep it from all sliding to one side, each individual panel is pegged in the middle so it can expand either direction and then that gap is just left between the two. And we're pulling out all the mistakes on this one. I cut too many half blind dovetails, totally forgot about the whole allowing for the slot in the bottom panel and stopping that dado or groove. That's right, easy fix. pulls your eye away from this and it diminishes not only this curve um, but also the fact that this is tapered back and just kind of takes your eye away from this in general so we got to do something there that's going to make it pop and something with this overhang so yeah let's figure that out All right, so the offcut from the lid, I feel like we're getting close with this shape. So I took that little notch out of the end and then it tucks up behind the case. So it tucks right up into the case there. And from this viewing angle, it looks great. But I think from a normal viewing angle, which will be top down, um, you won't see it. So I wanna bring it forward a little bit and address the accent on the leg, which I decided that a straight line opposing the curve on the leg really highlighted the curve more than doing string inlay along the curve. Kind of interesting, it tricked the eye into seeing more curve than was there. Really easy string inlay here. And this looks subtle now, but I use Cherry, which is UV reactive and should darken nicely over time. All right, so today's Saturday. Uh, we should be moving on to finishing, but I partnered with Fuji Spray and I'm really excited to give that a try, but it's not coming till Monday. Um, so we've got some time to kill. And I was thinking like this trunk is basically a deep void, right? Maybe a little sliding tray in the top would be cool. And I've got to make some boxes for an upcoming video to blow up with a Phantom 4K camera, which, which shoots a thousand frames per second in 4K and he said we could blow up some boxes so i think this would be a good time to make those boxes which we'll have a video up here 
pretty soon and get a tray made for the top of this. So get subscribed for that explosive video and there is the perfect little gun slash banana slash Bible tray, whatever you're into. Ooh, and it arrived. Big thanks to Fuji for sending out this Q5 five-stage turbine platinum air spraying system. Super cool. I'll uh, shoot anything from shellac to build high solids. Amazing system, super compact, no compressor needed, lays down like glass. Big thanks to everyone over on that team and go check out Fuji if you're looking to step up your finish game. And before I show you the money shots, I just want to say thank you for watching. If you made it this far in the video, I assume you liked it. So go ahead and hit that like button. And if you aren't already, please subscribe. It really helps me out as I build this channel. I hope you found this build informative or entertaining. Let me know down in the comments what you think of the swoopy leg design. And I look forward to reading those. Catch you in the next one.